Yo, uh, what's up everybody? Today we are going to be checking out the Sod PTR for phase five. Look at the new gear. We might even do a little bit of Blackwing Layer or ZG. So, hope you guys enjoy. But do I wear the Spinal Reaper or do I wear the Bone Reaper's Edge? That's so interesting to think about. Oh, dude, I just, I love like the building, man. I love building and like theory crafting things. And see, this is the thing that would really interest me in Sod. I feel like, I feel like the PVP in Sod, I would get really bored of because it's, it's a disaster. Like people are doing way too much damage, whatever, yada, yada. Okay, like we get it, we get it. It's a, it's a disaster. Oh man, do I have it in me for another wow stint? I just, dude, I need to level. I could just like raid log Sod. Dude, the Spinal Reaper. Spinal Reaper has like 99 more top end damage than BRE. The updated Spinal Reaper, and it's a 3.9 speed. That's crazy, Spinal Reaper is better than BRE. Having like different difficulties and stuff is just, maybe we just don't live in this world anymore, but like I really miss the times when like doing something was a big deal. It doesn't matter, there's no difficulties, but just doing it, just that's it. It's only, only getting it done and seeing the content was cool. That's not really a thing anymore because of these different difficulties. People will just go on like easy mode and they'll see it and it makes it less special. They made the healing two-hander. Do they have a necklace? There's flame guard gauntlets. Good old flame guard gauntlets. Oh wait, did they buff Thunderstrike? Not Vendor Strike anymore. No, it is certainly not. What? Shadow Flame Sword 1.2 speed offhand? Rogue only? Activating Blade Flurry now engulfs you in Shadow Flame, causing your attacks to ignore 2,000 of your target's armor? What? Oh, it's for Rogue Tank? I was gonna say, this is a disgusting PvP weapon, but Sod is literally a PvE. There's, there's like no PvP in Sod, right? I just, I don't even think it would be worth. See, that's the thing that really just sucks about Sod to me. The thing that sucks about Sod to me is that, like PvP is, that's, that's like the reason for me to play the game. This is my opinion. I feel like the the build variety in WoW Classic is really put on display whenever you're playing PvP. Whenever you're doing PvP things in WoW, and, and this is a big thing in, yeah, this is a big thing in WoW Classic in general. PvP is what shows all the different things that different classes can do, puts it on display, gives you the best of what the game has to offer. You know, and then there's some people it's like, oh, there's no, there's no arenas for like a rating or there's no ladder to like see like, okay, well, who's the best team at the end of the season or whatever. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about like pure gameplay. From a pure gameplay perspective, PvP in Classic WoW is what puts the best of what the game has to offer on display because that's where you have your different talents and stuff. Uh, it, it really shows the viability of a bunch of the different talents and a bunch of different builds, right? Even whenever it comes to items and gear. If I were to look at something like the, is it the Smolder Webs trinket? Where uh, there's the trinket that applies a poison on the target. And it's not that much damage, it's just a little poison dot, right? And it's like, why would you ever use this? Well, the reason why you would use it is in order to uh, keep a rogue out of stealth, for example. Gnomish stopwatch, right? Random trinket that you get at level 40, at like 40 range in the Badlands. There's a gnomish stopwatch trinket, but it's a, it's a good PVP trinket and you'll just keep that on you forever. You'll just have that in your bank forever for all of vanilla because if you're a PVPer, then you're, you're gonna end up doing that. Let's go and play with these set bonuses. Wait, what is draconic? Increases damage done by your damage by 20%. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Your judgments no longer consume your seals on the target. The cooldown on your judgment is instantly reset if used on a different seal than your last judgment. Huh? So what I used to do is I, I would call it judgment twisting. I would do this in vanilla, where I would judge command at a range. I would twist it with judgment at justice, and I would stun people for two seconds at a range. And like people didn't know, like they'd be like, what? I literally won arena matches doing that in Burning Crusade by interrupting a heal, like around the corner. Yeah, no, dude, I'm so glad they finally put twisting in, man. I, 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 I like harassed them about it forever, dude. I, I've, I've fought so hard for the twisting, man. I'm glad they finally put it in, even though I'm not playing anymore actively. Oh my gosh, dude, with all the little hits that go out, there's no mana issues whatsoever. Like I can consecrate. Dude, once you get the judgment set bonus that doesn't make you reapply your seals, it's gonna be insane. 
So people keep talking about this item here. This item is called Hammer of the Lightbringer. And it's like, oh, Paladins are getting a new legendary. But in reality, I, I, I took a look at this off stream a little bit. I mean, obviously this is an amazing weapon, right? Hammer of the Lightbringer, item level 90. 310 to 466 top end damage. 4.0 speed. That's the good stuff right there. Big, big old slow weapons. I like that. I'm a big fan of that. 14 strength, 20 agility, 10 stamina. Chance on hit, increase your damage by 15. It's like, okay, it's not that great. And then attack speed increased by 30% for eight seconds. How haste works for paladins and how procs per minute work. Seal of command is based off of procs per minute. Procs per minute means the slower your weapon is, the more procs you get per minute, right? So with a 4.0 speed weapon, if you're looking at seven PPM, seven procs per minute, meaning in 60 seconds, divided by four, 4.0 speed, 60 seconds, you get 15 attacks. You get seven procs per minute, so you have a 46.6% chance, repeating of course, of proccing seal of command. So slower is better in that regard. Now, when you increase your attack speed by 30%, haste is applied after the PPM calculation is applied. So you're attacking 30% faster now, but you still have that 46%. So haste is a very, very like high scaling stat for paladins in Burning Crusade and in vanilla. Equip, add four holy damage to your melee attacks. This is just flavor, essentially. It's just flavor. It's not that big of a deal. And then use shift your combat stance in order to wield Truthbearer as a hand in hand hat, a hand and a half sword, allowing you to use it with a shield. So yeah, on use, you can change this into a one-handed weapon. Now here's the big thing. It's, it's a sword, but it's a mace. It, it, I mean, it's, it's data mined. This isn't, this isn't like real yet. Holding this weapon somehow feels wrong to you. This weapon was meant to remain here at the spot where it fell from its owner's grasp as he breathed his last. So what does it mean? Burning of Anderhall is a new dungeon that's being added into Season of Discovery. Cool. I feel like it's pretty clear here. A lot of people are saying there's a new Paladin legendary, but I feel like this is from a boss fight in the Burning of Anderhall that is probably very similar to the Kael'thas fight in Tempest Keep where uh, they drop weapons on the ground. They're legendary weapons that you can only use for that fight. I, I think it is highly unlikely that this is going to be like a real new legendary in vanilla or facade rather because of the flavor text, because of the fact that it says the burning of Anderhall. I mean, getting Uther's hammer is like, that's sick, right? I mean, that's what it is. It's Uther's hammer. But burning of Anderhall, I mean, Season of Discovery is definitely a lot of the old lore, a lot of the old story of WoW is is based on, or it, it's it's got very deep paladin roots, right? Arthas, Uther, uh, the story of the Ashbringer, all these different things, right? Very cool. They even say it on WoWhead. Look at this. They're, yeah, they're saying the exact same thing on WoWhead, actually. I think this alone is kind of the biggest tell, right? I, so I don't think this is going to be something new. Now, does this mean we'll never get new legendaries? I don't know, but I would love to see something like a new legendary in Sod. And I do think that if you're like a, a lore nerd, somebody, somebody said this in chat the other day. The story of WoW is bad, but the lore of WoW is good. And they were talking about retail, meaning a lot of like the, the storylines from like a lot of the, the lore and the origins of how things were made to be have a lot of like very interesting characters, something that people get attached to. I mean, they've had all kinds of different things, books and like spin-off content, like whether it's books, they made the Warcraft movie, you know, like fan stuff, but it's cool, right? That kind of stuff is really cool. Uh, and it's because the characters and the lore is so good. People say like the story isn't, hasn't been as great lately, but honestly, man, they've been having this thing running for like 20 plus years. Four or five days ago was the five year anniversary of when Classic WoW launched. Think about that. I mean, that's what that's what it was, man. I mean, we, we look back on it and that is like the origin of kind of how I started making content. Like literally I started making, like my entire like purpose in content creation was to push for Classic WoW to come out for the longest time. I wasn't trying to be a streamer at first. Uh, I was just making videos. I was in between jobs. I was, I was looking for another football job, probably getting into coaching. And then it just, everything kind of took off because I ended up being that guy for Classic WoW. And it, was it perfect? No, like Classic wasn't hundred percent perfect, but for what it was, it was like, I mean, it was really good. And I I think, I think we did a lot of a lot of good out of it, right? I didn't know I didn't know it was Thursday. Until oh my gosh! Look at this, dude! Look at this. So whenever whenever this happened initially, look at this. In the first two days, August 26, 2019, August 27, 2019, I had 20 million minutes watched in two days. I gained almost 14k followers. 52 and a half hours. <laughs> this is how much I streamed. I broke the space-time continuum. I streamed 52 and a half hours in 48 hours.
Yeah. Just two days. Dude, the number one Rhett Paladin, okay, the Rhett God, broke the space-time continuum. I've only done this once before. It's never happened again. Think about how crazy that is.